Hey, so hello and welcome to the second episode of uh, PV Syst. So after explaining the storage part in the last episode on uh, how to add your battery uh, battery to your system, today I'll be explaining the detailed losses and the self consumption uh, uh, parameters that you have to deal with. So for the detailed losses, uh, there are thermal parameters, ohmic losses, um, LID mismatch, soiling losses. Um, and different other types of losses that you can change so you can have better simulation for your system uh, but one of the most important losses that you have to take care of is the thermal losses the ohmic losses and the soiling losses uh, because if you are in desert area such as the UAE or the site that we have selected so uh, we have to take care of the soiling losses because uh, there are a lot of dust that will accumulate on the solar panels therefore it will decrease the solar panel efficiency so you can def uh, define monthly values depending on the values that uh, uh, you have or you have researched about in your country or the area you are doing the system in uh, and you have the ohmic losses for uh, the wiring, cables, etc. Everything you can define it here. And the thermal losses, uh, this one is regarding the temperatures uh, that you have in your country. Because as we know, the higher the temperature, the lower the efficiency will be of the solar panels. So you have to define them here, but they need further analysis and further uh, calculations to find. Okay, uh, now for the self-consumption here, just uh, to define the load that uh, you want your system to uh, be running. So for example, if there is no self-consumption, so you are selling your electricity directly to the grid. Fixed constant consumption, so if you have a, a, a load of 5 kilowatts, for example, monthly values, daily profile, etc., you have a lot of options to select uh, depending on what load you have and how you want the system to uh, deal with it okay uh, now let's run our first simulation and see what data are we expecting from the simulation so the most two important parameters are the, are the uh, orientation and the system the rest are not really important but they do affect the numbers that we have so if i run the simulation i'll get this data here to better uh, represent this data here i have to press on report it will generate a PDF file that has everything I want. Okay, so for example, here the longitude, latitude uh, of the site that I'm selecting, the altitude also, the, the albedo. Um, I, I didn't uh, select a shading, so there's no shading. Uh, the tilt and azimuth. Yeah, uh, and here are some different uh, information: seven kilo. Uh, watt power, the total uh, PV power, 22 modules, 4.6 kilowatt AC total inverter power, uh, everything here is defined. So this report will help you a lot in defining your system and giving it to your uh, manager so he can check the system and check the uh, reliability of your system. And the most important uh, parameters are mentioned in this page, uh, the main results, and also this page here, which shows the losses diagram. So for example, here we have 13.38 due to temperature losses because we are in the UAE, which is a hot country at summer. So we have 13.38% uh, losses uh, from uh, uh, the temperature so we have ohmic and wiring losses uh, 1.16 the mismatch loss 2.1 uh, inverter loss during operation efficiency uh, 2.59 so as we can see here everything is mentioned how much power we have how much losses etc this uh, these two pages this one and this one are the most two important pages that you have to take care of uh, and we have finally the page number six, which shows uh, the graphs uh, and the single line diagram of our system. So now let let me uh, let let us look at the ohmic losses. For example, it's one point sixteen. Okay. So if I change the losses in the detailed losses here, the ohmic losses to uh, less fraction from one point five to one point or two point five. Let's make it. Okay. And let's press OK and run the simulation again uh, report the data 
as we can see here the amic loss is now 1.93 uh, so if I increase the amic losses even more for example 3.5 the amount of losses I'm, I'm losing from the omic losses is now 2.71 so it's really important to have accurate data of the omic losses that you have in your system and uh, okay, and for the thermal losses so it's 20 the constant loss factor uh, and the wind loss factor so if we change those numbers uh, we will have a different uh, 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 losses depending on what numbers we have this should be calculated depending on accurate data uh, that we have and it's here really important to note that uh, if I change the constant loss factor to let's say for example 35 okay uh, 35 watt per meter squared kelvin and i press ok i'll have error in my system which uh, says the inverter power is slightly undersized uh, that's because the uh, overload losses is higher now so i have to decrease the number of solar panels that i have in my system so i can have better efficiency and better overall uh, power output of the system so if i return it to 20 i can increase the number of the solar panels so let's say i want 12 but uh, I have to get lower constant uh, uh, loss factor. So if I decrease it to 15, I can put 12 solar panels by two, which is 24 solar panels in my system with the losses being handled by the system. So here it's not really depending on just random data. You have to calculate, uh, to calculate the data based on uh, real numbers and real data that uh, you have gathered from the site you have selected okay uh, and here we have the energy management which will be the last part of uh, today's episode but before going to energy management uh, when you run the simulation and press report uh, you can save your you can save your pdf uh, as file so let's say report one so now it's successfully saved so if I went to here, it will open automatically as a PDF, so you can send it to whomever you want. Okay, uh, and here are also some tables that uh, might be important for you. Uh, hourly graphs, uh, economic evaluation, but we still didn't go through it, so I'll be going through it in the next episode. Uh, but uh, now I'll go to the energy management section. So uh, in energy management here, you, you can define the inverter temperature, external ambient temperature. So if you want to make it dependent on the external temperature or uh, with shift, so you can add an increase of temperature. So for example, if the uh, ambient temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, so you can uh, add an increase of 5 degrees Celsius extra, maybe from the heat generated by the inverter itself, or you can uh, make it as fixed temperature if you are making it indoors and here are uh, the power factors the power factor if you want to change it uh, the grid power limitations so if you have limitations for how many kilowatts you can sell to your uh, grid uh, and here are the b50 b90 estimations uh, i really don't have a lot of information about b50 b90 estimations because they are not uh, really used in the uh, real case scenarios so uh, as engineers we only take care of the inverter power factor and grid power limitations uh, most of the time there are no grid limitations uh, for power selling uh, and uh, inverter temperature you increase it by uh, 5 degrees 7.5 degrees depending on uh, the type of inverter and the maximum operating temperature the inverter can be uh, can work on Okay, uh, so this is the last part of uh, today's episode. Uh, I hope you learned about the detailed losses, how to run your first simulation, and the energy management. And in the next episode, I'll just uh, return the data to as it is. Okay, uh, so in the next episode, I'll be going through the economic evaluation and uh, advanced uh, simulation options. Uh, and how to do a 3D modeling, uh, inshallah. So I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.